Good morning, everybody. My name is Kyle Hodgins. I'm a tech and a trainer for McNeil. This is Getting Started Rhino for Windows. Um, today, we're going to build this little scooter mabob thing here. Um, I live in the Pacific Northwest, and the weather's been spectacular the last couple of weeks. And so our sidewalks have been inundated with these wheeled locusts. But I've come to appreciate the design on them a bit and have noticed that there's been some kind of interesting things happening in this space. So I figured, why not? Let's give a shot and, and try one of these. So um, do me a favor, just hit the chat. Let me know that the audio is coming through. I just want to make sure I don't spend an hour talking to myself. Um, looks good. All right. Excellent. All right. So what we're going to do today is we're going to jump into this and uh, probably about, I'm hoping to be about an hour, hour and 15, something like that, um, and go through the entire build, you know, from beginning. I've been to one of my, my, my webinars before. Um, these are for you. Um, they're interactive. Find the chat. Um, and uh, if I do something that you haven't seen before or, or went too fast or something like that, hit the chat, let me know. I'll back up and do it again. Um, I can always segue off into a little, you know, side session or whatever if we need to explain something with a little bit more detail. But um, let's go ahead and jump into this. And I'm going to do it from the very beginning. So I'm going to just delete this image for now. As always, um, I typically start with a scrubby sketch that I either did the morning of or the evening before. And then I don't practice it. Um, and the reason for that is I want to put myself in the same position that you would be in if someone walked into your office and dropped a sketch on your desk and said, build this, and you'd never seen it before and you had to figure it out along the way. So um, run the picture command, drag, find the image on your desktop, drag it into your scene. Um, I usually put it in the front view. Um, if you look in your tabs on the side, you'll have a material tab. If you don't have a material tab, right click on any of the other tabs, find it, and then put a check mark next to it. That's how you can load or unload any tab over here that you don't want. Click on the material, roll down to the transparency, and I just crank the transparency up a little bit to fade the image so that we can draw over it without seeing our lines getting occluded. And then the next thing I, I like is I like to actually just move this image back in space to avoid this problem here, especially in shaded mode. If you make something, throw it in shaded mode, then you know your model cuts the image in half and you can't see what's going on. So I typically tend to try and drag this out of the modeling window or out of the modeling you know cube or where I would be actually building the thing. And then I'm going to just position it on the lines just for OCD purposes <laughs> and uh, stick this here. So um, the the all of the modeling is going to happen on the seaplane, which is which is uh, centered around the origin zero zero zero, but the image can be anywhere in space, you know, whatever you want to do. Now the cool thing about pictures, if you haven't used them before, is you can do anything that you would normally do with an object. You can copy them, you can rotate them, you can you know do whatever you want. So if you wanted to set up a reference cube, like say this was your front, this was your side. Um, this was your, uh, you know, your, your front view or whatever. And then I typically would put these on layers and bec because I'm only working off of one image, I'm going to get rid of those, but I am going to stick this on a layer two. And I'm going to mute everybody. And, um, and I'm going to stick this on a layer. I'm going to right click over here and say change object layer. And then that go back to my default layer by changing the check mark. And then that gives me the ability to be able to turn it on and off. Also gives me the ability to be able to lock it, which is important because now I can work over it without it selecting. And then I can turn it on and off, you know, as, as needed. So if I was to build a reference cube that had a front, right side, all that kind of stuff, I would. I would just make a layer stack that says, you know, front, right, back, whatever. So, so we've got this set up correctly. And 
I'm going to just jump into this. And usually when I'm building vehicles, because so much is dependent on the relationship of the object to the wheels, I usually start with the wheels. So let's just jump into that. And I'm going to zoom in on the rear wheel because it's a little bit more defined than the front. And the way that I typically do wheels is I will actually come through here and establish, you know, my center point by just drawing, you know, the rim. And I'm going to use nudge to kind of get this exactly where I want. If you haven't used nudge before, it's in tools, options, uh, modeling, aids, nudge. I have mine set up to use the arrow keys. And then I actually have it set up. Um, the nudge key alone is 0.1. Control plus nudge is 0.01. And shift plus nudge is 0.25. So that gives me three levels of nudginess. I guess it's, is that a word? I don't know. Is nudginess a word? It is now. All right. So I set it up for three different layers of, of uh, you know, transform here as far as that. And you can change this to whatever you want. So if you're working in millimeters, obviously, you need to keep in mind the scale of what you're dealing with because 0.1 millimeters would be almost imperceptible. So you'd need to adjust that based on your units that you're that you're working in. So now that we've got this, this set up, I... I tend to kind of like just copy and paste and then shift drag on gumball and establish kind of the 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 boundaries of where you know kind of the rim is doing its thing and the way I'm reading this is that there's like kind of a face and then there'd be a step and then there's a face kind of here and then I'm kind of reading this as like a center rib that then, you know, maybe that's a bolt on or whatever that, that, you know, has a center cap, like a BBS rim or something like that. Um, and then I'll come over here and I'll just start kind of determining what, what that looks like. And in this case, I'm going to move, I'm going to kill history too, because that'll screw everything up. I've got a hotkey set up for that, but the, the command is history purge. And, um, so this one and this one relate together and I can just I can just make a planar face out of that. And then this one is going to go in a little bit and then this one is going to go in a little bit farther. And that's going to kind of establish the dish of our rim. And so from here I can just, you know, I can just loft and I could do this in more than one step if I wanted to, but and I'm just going to kind of do that. And that's going to give like, you know, kind of the dish of our rim. And then if I go to the top view, I'm going to decide like how thick this thing is. And so I'm going to just pull it off the center line. And then I'm going to copy it across the center line. And I've got a hotkey for doing that. But the command is mirror. And then you would just do that in the X. And if you're interested in my hotkey setups, um, I'll pause on this for a second so you can see what it is. But if we go up here to aliases, um, this is my hotkey setup, and I'll get that scroll through here a little bit so that you can screenshot that. This is the this is the um, you know the the keyboard commands, and then these are the actual commands that they're running. And then if we roll down here to the bottom, that's the rest of them. So um, so feel free to screenshot that if you want, or I can um, you know I can pause in the video for just a second so that you can see that. Um, but, uh, MX and MY are the mirror axis. So I can, I can scale it this way, or I can scale it that way, or I can mirror it this way or mirror it that way. So, so that that's the, that's the setup that I have for that. All right. Anytime I use a hotkey, I'm going to try and call it out. And if I don't, then yell at me. So I, <laughs> so I do so. All right. And then, um, because this is just going to be a quick demo, I'm going to, I'm going to just loft these together so that we get uh, a volume. I always try and work in in volumes uh, instead of um, you know surfaces. I, I often refer to this as chunks. And so we're going to make this wheel into a chunk, and it is a closed poly surface. And as I do that, as I'm modeling, the reason I do that is because it allows you to be able to know that this part is good. And so we can move on. So if I had to, um, 
if I had to uh, 3D print it, I could know that at any point along the along the the process of the model that this part is 3D printable, and we can verify that by doing show edges. This command here, show edges, and set it to naked, and you can see up here the report says it found 14 edges, but no naked edges and no non-manifolds. Well, that means that this part is is um, watertight and it is something that if you were to throw it out then um, it uh, would go to a printer all right let's take some questions um this title is getting started but it seems like we're getting right into the weeds pretty quick um so the idea here is that if you're um if you're new to rhino i'm going to try and show give you some exposure to the tools in a in a way that is um, you know practical. So we're actually going to build something. So if it feels like we're going fast, just buckle your seatbelt and hold on. The video does get posted to our YouTube, which is Rhinoceros 3D on YouTube, and you'll be able to go back and review this in detail. So what I would recommend is if you feel like you know you're over your head already, um, just take notes and you know keep keep an eye on the on the video and take notes and i'll try to explain it and by my, by all means please you know feel free to ask questions and i'll and i'll i'll answer them along the way um but the the idea here is that you know i'm going to kind of explain my thinking and all that kind of stuff then we post the recording then you can go back and run it don't try and build it with me because um unless you do have some experience it's going to probably go a little faster than than you're going to be able to keep up so so the the cool thing about where we are right now is is I've built this shape and I can start to now look at it and say okay I built it but I'm not in love with the relationships and stuff like this is way too wide and this step isn't you know this step in here isn't deep enough and all that kind of stuff so let's fix it so if I shift control click on something, that's called a sub-object selection. This is a poly surface, right? And you can see that it says that up here, a closed poly surface added to the selection. But a poly surface is made up of individual surfaces. It's also made up of edges. And I'm gonna hide the curves for now, actually. I'm gonna delete the curves because we don't need them anymore. And so what we can do is, is we can now select bits and pieces of this and and edit it and deal with it um closed poly surface the same as a solid technically yes um in rhino because it's a surfacing program it's still individual surfaces right i can still pick these individual surfaces but it is a closed poly surface so it's assuming that this is solid so if you were to send this to like pro e or, or nx or something like that it would be recognized as a solid uh closed manifold part but um but technically in rhino like if i delete the face it's hollow inside it. It's not like, you know, the difference between Rhino and, and like Pro E is Rhino is like building stuff out of paper. You're taping the edges together to, to enclose volume. Something like SolidWorks or Pro E, it's like cutting something out of foam. It's always, it's always got an internal volume that you, that you need to deal with. So that's, that's kind of the paradigm shift. So let's edit this a little bit. I'm going to control shift click, which is a sub object selection. Gumball is going to center itself in the bounding box center of that. And then I'm just going to scale this a little thinner because I was actually kind of seeing this as a rib. And that gives me that. But now I'm going to control shift click this poly surface edge and this poly surface edge. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to scale these in because that is going to give me a little bit more of the look that I was hoping for. And this allows me to be able to edit this and the reason that this works is because this these surfaces are all degree one in this direction there's only two control points here and here and it allows me to be able to do that now if this was a degree three surface you might see some distortion on how that that works it'll still do it but it it might distort and in that case i would say that probably is not what you know you would want to do so I like this. I like this workflow here, where you know we're just kind of lofting stuff together and then editing it, and that's kind of more along the feel of what I was looking for. So let's go to the 
let's go to the front view and then decide like where kind of the external depth of this wheel is. So it's going to be about that diameter. And then if we go to the right view, we can locate this kind of in the center of this thing. Point. And then that gives us something to kind of aim for as far as the shape of the tire. And then what I like to do is I'll start at the center line here and then place my first point. That way I know that I'm going to be tangent across the center line when I mirror this thing. And then I'll start drawing the rest of the profile of my tire. And in this case, I like to kind of do a little shape like that, which makes it look like it's actually tucked onto the rim. And then I'm just going to turn the corner and then I'm going to come down here and make a shape like that. If I mirror it, if I mirror it in the right direction, direction and then join this, that is a closed curve. And again, like I said before, I like doing stuff that's closed because that allows me to be able to know that everything is a closed chunk. And if I have a closed chunk that's overlapping another closed chunk, I can either Boolean them together or I can leave them overlapping and still print them because the printer doesn't care if stuff is overlapping as long as it's as long as it's the normals are going in the right direction. And we'll talk about normals in just a second. So I'm going to just revolve this and I'm going to use a revolved uh, the center of the revolve axis. I'm going to use the center of this and it's going to spin around that direction and then we're going to do full circle and then that's going to be our wheel. And because we did this with history, I had history turned on, always record and always update. If I don't like the shape of the wheel, I can go to the original curve and I can edit the, the points that made up that, that original curve and I can adjust the wheel or the shape of the tire a little bit here so that I can get a little bit different uh, look for this. And so a lot of times when I'm modeling, I will model with history, but I also get to the point where I'm kind of done with history and then I will typically get rid of it. And I do that with a hotkey and the command is, is uh, history purge that we already talked about. So um, that is of our tire and maybe we want to give it just a little bit more roundy and a little bit less flat and so i'm going to pull this point in a little closer to the center and i'm going to pull this point up just a little bit and that's gonna allow that to be a little less flat i'm gonna do the same thing on this side And that still gives us a tangent center line, but it gives us a little bit more of a kind of a low profile shape. So now we can look at this wheel and say, okay, let's refine it a little bit. Um, actually, let's build the center first and then we'll we'll deal with that. So the center, it looks like it's basically a, you know, a simple five spoke design. And so I like to establish the center of these. That, and it looks like I missed my axle point just a little bit, so we'll adjust that later. And then I will draw my curves for one spoke. And then I will transform array polar around the center. And let's just do five. And that gives us that. And I'm going to duplicate the edge of this guy using the dupe edge command. I'm going to select my curves. And then I'm going to isolate. And that's going to give me just the curves that make up this wheel. And now I'm going to use uh, Curve Boolean, which is one of my favorite tools for this type of stuff. And I'm going to select all of these curves. And then I'm going to pick in the areas that I want to keep. And I want to keep here and here and here and here and here. And then actually I want to keep all of this stuff as well too. And so let's get all of this. 
And what that's going to do is that's going to give us this center insert. If I delete input, I'm left with the result, which should be, it looks like it didn't take my delete input. And that, that leaves me with just this center piece, which I can then turn into a flat plane. And then we can go to wireframe and then refine a little bit. And it looks like it's got a, a shape in here. So let's go ahead and add that. And I'm going to do that with a rounded rectangle. And I'm going to do that off of three point. And I'm going to just kind of eyeball it in the middle here. And then we'll figure out how to get it centered next. And I'm a little bit of a Neanderthal when it comes to this kind of stuff. So as far as picking centers, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a couple of pieces of reference geometry in here. And I probably could have done this first, but let's do that. And then I'm going to move this from this midpoint to here. And then I'm going to rotate this, this midpoint to there. And then that way I know it's centered and you know, all that kind of stuff. And there's probably a clever way to do that, but I'm not terribly clever. So there you have it. All right, let's do a, let's do an array. Polar five, use the last center. Oops, should use this center. Use last, there we go. And that spins that around. And then we can just simply grab these curves and I can use the cell last command and it'll pick the last things that were lit up and I can just trim. Pull this out just a little bit like that. And then I'm going to use the extrude dot to give it some thickness. And then I'm going to go into the front view and use gumball with snappy dragging to make sure that it's centered in the midpoint. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about when I say use gumball with snappy dragging, if you right click down here, these are all the gumball settings and there's a smooth dragging or snappy dragging. I always use snappy dragging. I also run my O snaps down here disabled. And the reason I do that is because as I'm running around the scene down here, it's not snapping to anything until I hold down the Alt key. When I hold down the Alt key, you'll see that the O snaps turn on down here. And then that way I can specifically nail a part, let go of Alt, and then I can move around freely without having it snap to different stuff. So. Um, somebody said, why are you not changing colors for distinguishing different parts? Do you view it as tedious? Um, personal preference. I personally hate modeling in colors. I hate the, like the, the clown show that the model turns into. I am definitely, um, I, I have, I went to school to be an automotive designer. And so I'm kind of used to looking at things in clay <laughs> and, and, uh, so I, I definitely kind of tend to work more in monochromatic. So. Um, we still back audio good. Is the audio still okay? Said that they lost me for a second. Still good. Okay, good. All right. So, um, so to answer your question, um, I, I, I don't like modeling in colors personally, cause I just don't like the way it looks. I, I tend to just work in, in monochrome and then I'll when I get into the rendering stage then I'll add colors to it to see what it actually looks like. So I'm going to scale this out a little bit so that it it intersects completely and then I'm just going to simply do a boolean to put that together. And then that's the basis of my wheel. And then there's probably going to be a hub or something in here that it needs to be. So let's go ahead and throw that in and I'm going to just do that with a with a cylinder. And we'll say, yeah, maybe we'll go ahead and make it big and it can go ahead and cut through there. That's fine. And then we'll do like an arbitrary thickness. And I'm going to center it using snappy dragging. And then I can scale knowing that it's going to be symmetrical. And we'll say it's about, eh, we'll call it about that. Run the cap command, caps off both. 
and then we'll boolean it together i'm not going to get too deep into like filleting and blending and all that kind of stuff because that's obviously stuff that we could do if we wanted to like start adding some shapes in here and blend and fill it and chamfer and all that kind of stuff but for speed's sake i think i'm going to just i'm going to just motor um and we'll assume that that's all all done or we can add some we can add some uh, edge softness at the end for the rendering and stuff like that so um I want to add a little bit more detail onto the step, so I'm going to onto this hub. So I'm going to Control Shift click. I'm going to start dragging the the surface, and then I'm going to tap the Alt key, and you'll see that little plus symbol that showed up there. I don't know if you can see that. See that showing up next to my cursor. That means that we're in copy mode, and when I let go, I'm going to get another face. So this I can now scale, and then I can just extrude that in, and then I'm going to copy that to the other side and then we're going to boolean this whole thing together and that's kind of about as far as i'm going to go on the wheel we could obviously go and like design a little cutter to run around here and make some tread if we wanted to but i think i'm going to roll this as a slick for right now i'm going to copy this in the front and do it with the same size wheels and that's probably about as far as we need to go for the wheels on this right now. And I'm going to take this and I'm going to, I'm going to throw these on a layer. Click, change object layer. And I hate it when it changes color on me, so I'm just going to turn it to black. My old business partner used to clown on me endlessly for that. He was used to make him mental that he couldn't just take a look and see where what layer my parts were on, but I. I don't know. It's just a thing. <laughs> it's a schism I have. I just can't stand working in colors. All right. So let's go to wireframe. And I am actually going to hide these for just a second. And we can, I'm going to go back up here to the default and I'm going to hide that. And then we can start looking at the, the body of this thing and how it works. And so we've basically got a tube here and then we've got a chassis that kind of looks like it it starts kind of round up here maybe and then it starts getting a little bit thicker down here so I'm kind of seeing like maybe a section change that rolls through here and I feel like this whole thing might really do well as a sub D so let's look into that so let's go over here to sub D uh, sub D tools and I'm gonna just start this with a cylinder and I'm going to use three point just so I can point it in the right direction. And oop, that's not actually what I wanted. I wanted uh, direction none. That's what I wanted. And I'm going to just pull a cylinder out that's about the right size. And then I'm going to drag it down here. And it looks like we got a little big, but that'll do for now. And. We'll do that. Control Shift drag. And I'm going to just pull this down like that. Control Shift drag to sub object select. I'm going to pull this up high like that. And I'm not going to worry too much about the ends on this. We could um, we could crease, we could, you know, do all sorts of stuff like that, but I'm not going to worry too much about that because what I'm going to do is I'm going to use sub D for what sub D is good at and then I'm going to convert to NURBS and then finish up my detailing in NURBS. So the other thing, I'm, I'm going to take this same object, I'm going to copy and paste it, and then I'm going to move it down here, and I'm going to rotate it roughly into where I wanted this to be. And I'm going to control shift drag in. I'm not, see how I'm not really worrying about a my exact shapes right at the moment. I just want to get close and then I can start refining, you know, from there. And what I'm doing here is the reason that I made these two shapes identical is because they have the same amount of faces, right? 10 sub D faces And sub D faces. So when I go to merge these together, I will I won't have any issues with the count. All of the faces will line up and all that kind of stuff. There's a lot of counting in sub D as far as trying to make sure that everything lines up correctly. 
So now we can come in here and I'm going to switch to box mode by hitting the tab key. And I'm going to just use my standard Rhino tools. In this case, I'm using scale one. I'm going to rotate this a little bit so that it kind of goes in the direction I want it to go in. And then move and scale and do all that kind of stuff. And in this case, I need to pack this off at the back back here because this is going to be a fork, so that's going to split. So this is actually going to come up here like that. Nothing complicated here. We're just moving, scaling, you know, doing all the kind of stuff that we're already, we already know how to handle. And if you don't know how to handle that just yet, then you'll want to jump into the level one training on our, on our website. <clears throat> if you go to the learn page, rhino3d.com learn, there's a, um, there is a level one class that will take you through the, like, what does this button do? How does that button, how do I move? How do I change views? All that kind of stuff. So that's a really good place to start. Um, what's the advantage of SubD? SubD is, allows you to do really organic stuff really easy. And I'll show you uh, through the course here of what we're doing, why that's a good thing. Get rid of these faces, because I'm going to open this up. So that's open. That one's open. And let's join these together. So in order to join this together, I need to make a little segment here. And so I'm going to actually slide this one down. And then I'm going to add another one with the Add Edge tool, this one. And I'm going to slide that up like that. And what that's going to allow me to do is that's going to allow me to be able to connect all of this stuff to other stuff. And actually, what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of these three faces. We're going to open that up, four faces, actually. And this is going to give us 10 sub D edges. If I check this. I've also got 10 sub D edges, which means that we can knit this all together really pretty easily. And I'm going to do it piece by piece so you can follow along. But basically, if I select these two points and then stitch, I'm going to use the average, which is just the default. And then I'm going to just go around here and I'm going to knit these together. And you can see that what happens is this thing becomes one unified piece. And you can, you can, for what it's worth, you can stitch edges together, but it's a little bit easier to see if I do it piece by piece. And the reason I'd say sub D requires a lot of counting is if this count is off, like say for instance, I had 10 edges and six edges, I'd have to manage that somehow. I'd have to figure out how to um, get those edges to match. And there's a bunch of different ways we can do that, but it's much easier if you just pay attention from the beginning and make sure that all of your edges match. All right. And so now the cool thing is when I switch out of box mode into smooth mode, ta da! I get this really beautifully smooth part, right? So the advantage of sub D, that's it right there. Now, We've got some work to do as far as trying to match our art, right? And if I look at this, I can say, okay, well, this kind of pulled away from the art a little bit. So I'm going to move that there. And this, that, and this whole thing up. And the one, the one asterisk I always throw when it comes to following art is don't let the art lead you off a cliff. So as you're designing, when you're when you're working on stuff, if you've got art that you're trying to hit, and along the way, you figure out that the art is is not leading you in a direction that you want to be, 
stop following it. Make make your decisions in 3D and and use you know your design skills in order to be able to evaluate the model as you're modeling in 3D. At the end of the day, the 3D is what is gonna is gonna get made. And don't let don't let the art dictate, you know, force you into a direction where the design is suffering just for the sake of, of following the art. Okay. That's a that's a really important thing that a lot of folks they get really, really hung up on whether or not the art is going to do what they want it to do uh, or whether the model is following the art exactly and all that kind of stuff. Now, if you're doing a portrait of somebody, well, yeah, then you got to follow the art exactly. But if you're doing a, a product design, you want to make sure that the part that's on the screen is the thing that's beautiful, right? And if the art's leading you in the wrong way, dump it. Don't don't follow it. Don't Don't pay attention to it. You know, it's it's uh, something that takes a little bit of courage to be able to do, but sometimes it's it's the right way to do it. So I've deleted a couple edges here to just get a little bit better flow through there. And I kind of like what that's doing now. So now let's take a look at this shape and say, OK, well, I actually feel like this thing wants to flatten out a little bit, so I'm going to just and pull get that to have that slightly flatter cross section i'm going to pick these two edges and scale them apart and we get this nice transition from that round section of the head tube into a square section for the body and you can see that the transition happens really nicely and organically in this place i'm shift control clicking the points and i'm just pulling and i'm watching see what my highlights are doing. That's one of the reasons I like working in this gray color because it's kind of easy to see what the highlights do. And, you know, maybe we even do something like this. Maybe there's something like for an engineering purpose, like we throw a little reverse curve in here and that makes this stiffer, you know, or makes it stronger, gives us a little bit more, um, you know, whatever. Gives us whatever. <laughs> That's what we're doing. We're adding whatever. All right, and so now we'll go back and we'll evaluate our art and say, okay, well, now we maybe we need to get a little closer than we were before, so I'm just going to scale this. Scale those edges, and you can see that it's starting starting to pull together kind of how we wanted it to go together. And, and this thing had a, this little kind of OG curve in here, and I don't know whether, I don't know whether I like that or not, so... We'll throw it in for now, but we can always go and take it out later if we if we decide that we don't like it. Which is one of the other things that I really love about SubD is there's a lot of there's a lot of iterative freedom where you can come in here and just design things. All right, so let's look at let's look at the top up here and it's the top has this this shape where it kind of comes around the corner and a lot of people get hung up in sub d about like okay well how do i get around this corner like what do i you know how do i get this exact shape and all this kind of stuff the answer is all you need to do is get the shape down here right only you only need the shape that's below this line, right? It's the worst arrow I've ever drawn. Um, because up here, we're gonna just we're just gonna clip that off. We're gonna convert to NURBS and we're gonna clip that off. So how do we do that? So I'm gonna take this and I'm actually gonna delete this for now. And I'm gonna bring this down a little bit. And then I'm gonna take this edge and I'm gonna this C plane waffle, you see how I can move this thing? If I hold down control then what it's going to do is it's going to allow me to extrude and i'm going to so i'm going to drag the seaplane waffle and it's going to allow me to extrude in a couple of different directions and so i'm going to come up here and i'm going to go like to there and then i'm going to rotate this edge up there like that and then i'm going to grab this start dragging the seaplane waffle hold down control 
and I'm going to extrude out to there. And you can see that like this kind of doesn't do what I want it to do. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to overbuild it like this so that the shape that I'm worried about is the one that's underneath down here. And so I'm going to just control shift drag until I get that shape because I can always just hack this off when I get to NURBS. All of the sub B stuff converts to NURBS lovely, no problems, and it, and it works great. So I'm going to overbuild this knowing that I'm going to trim it and not, not worry about it. And so that way I'm using the stuff that does the stuff best instead of trying to force something or make a sub D model that's, that would have been really difficult to make you know, to try and get that sharp transition into that soft transition would have been kind of a pain. Same thing down here. I'm not worried that it, about this stuff down here because it's all going to get hacked off anyway. So even if I pull this, even if I have to grab this entire thing and like, you know, use this to adjust that shape, it doesn't matter what this looks like because I'm going to, I'm going to cut it off anyway. So I'm not terribly concerned about it. All right, let's look at the let's look at the back here and figure out like what we're going to do with this fork design. And because this has 10 edges, we know that we've got 5 here, right? Five here. And then we've got 5 on the other side. If I grab this 5 and I extrude them and then I move them out this way a little bit, and then I grab these five. And I extrude those and move them out a little bit. I can separate them into two different edge loops, right? And I can so I can come out here and I can say, well, give me give me these guys. And then I can start extruding. I select it correctly. I double click on an edge. I get, I fill in the edge between the two edges. And I can start kind of pulling this out like that. And I'm not even really worried about the other side because I can always go back at a later date and, and um, mirror this. So these two edges right here, I want those to be sharp. So I'm going to actually crease those. And that's going to allow me to then add that sharpness that I was looking for. And I'm going to grab all of this stuff and scale it from here, make this thinner. That's going to make my, my fork shape. And then I can kind of look at this and say, OK, do I need this edge? Let's see. Yeah, looks like I do kind of need that edge. Um, because what I want to be able to do is grab this stuff and like really kind of get that fork shape, right? And then maybe this guy needs to go this way, like that. Let's bring our wheels back and see how they relate. And it looks like, you know, we're close-ish, but not great. So let's fix that. And I think what I want to do is I actually want to add an edge in here so i'm going to use this insert points and i'm going to go from here to here and i'm going to actually just complete that edge and that's going to give me full edge now that i can use to adjust instead of just a partial edge And it looks like this, that shape change probably doesn't work great for our fork. So let's, or for our rear triangle. So let's take that out a little bit. And let's do some adjustment so that that lines up better. And I'm doing a lot of modeling in smooth mode and I'm breaking my own rule because I usually always preach model in box mode and we're going to get there 
real quick here and you'll see why. So if I go to box mode by hitting the tab key, you can see that there's kind of a topology mess going on and I need to, I need to deal with that. And so what I'm going to do is come back now and, and handle this mess I've made. And the reason, the way I'm going to do that is just by simply coming in here and untying all of bits and pieces. Edge, I think. Way. Let's get that one. In box mode, it's so much easier to keep track of what's a mess and what's not. And as you get more experience with sub D, you'll get to the point where you'll actually start being able to read the box mode. See how the messy this is down here? Straighten all this out. Shift control clicking these points so I can select them. And using snappy dragging. Them out. See how I made a mess of it in here? Box mode allows you to be able to really identify where those problems are and sort them out. Here's my favorite tricks. Relocate gumball to here and then scale to zero and it'll straighten that whole row right out. So this is this is a good example of why I like to say model in box mode, thick, you know, refine in smooth mode. If you've seen any of my other videos, I say that a lot. And I absolutely did not follow my own advice on this, and I'm paying the price for it because I have to come through and sort all this out now. So you can see that this is now in much better shape. Add a little bit of shape to this. That. This is much more organized now so that when we switch back to smooth mode, it's now not nearly as messy as it was before. And then we can come in here and try and deal with it. So let's 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 mirror this now. And I'm going to use the symmetry command. And I'm going to do this around zero. And I am going to flip this. Actually, nope. I want to mirror that side. And so now we've got a symmetrical model that we can play with. And if I grab this edge, when I move it, you can see that I can clearance this. I'm going to relocate my gumball out here. Scale that a little wider, and then just adjust this so that it fits what I want this to do. So that push-pull, that kind of taffy you know, effect that you get out of sub D is one of the things that I really like about it because it allows you to be able to just kind of really freely explore some shapes. So we're going to call that, we're going to call that good. Maybe we'll add a little more shape into here that's interesting. One of the things that I also like about sub D is you can kind of find the way along the way. Like as you're doing this, you can look at it and say like, okay, I know what the art said I was supposed to be doing, but now that I'm into it, I kind of found some shapes and stuff that I like and I'm going to, I'm going to run with it. And so your design gets done in 3D as opposed to 2D, which is the way it should be done. Anyways, but let's call that good. And then we need to go ahead and finish up the inside of this to close it out. And what we'll do 
pick these edges and I'm going to bridge and I'm going to use I'm going to use two segments actually three segments just to get enough and then eh, actually I'm going to undo that bridge using two segments because I've got two segments here so WD has a lot of counting What I want to make sure is that I've got the same number of segments on each side so that I can bridge across this way. So if I can bridge these, close off the ends. So I want two, there we go. And that closes off the end. And then if I wanted this sharp, I could just crease but I kind of like the kind of smoothed out version here. So let's just add a little shape to this. And that makes up right. All right. So we've got our wheels, we've got our frame. We need a, oh man, there didn't I, look at that. Let's fix that. Yeek. Goodness, looks like I grabbed this face and I moved it. I don't want that back where it's supposed to be. There we go. And so we'll design some kind of axle or something to go in there. And we need some foot pads for this thing to sit on. So let's design those. And I'm going to just do that out of a sub D cube real quick. So we'll grab a cube. And let's hide everything so we don't screw anything up. I'm going to just do this with a sub D cube real quick. And I'm going to just do an arbitrary number. And then grab this guy, and I'm going to use the shear command. And I'm going to just shear this back a little bit like that. And that gives us kind of the shape that we were looking for from the side. And that's huge, so let's make it less huge. And then this has got a fit, so I'm going to lock these guys. This fits. We can adjust that relationship a little bit if we want. And then I might want to just add a little bit of shape to this by rotating these faces. Let's mirror that. And We'll add some kind of detail to connect those. And then let's just deal with the fork here. And I think the fork, I probably want to do it like semi-mechanically. So let's go, let's pick this wheel. And that. And I'm going to just do this with a rounded rectangle. So if we go standard here, rounded from the center, I'm going to bring this up kind of like that. I'm going to round it out completely. Rotate. 
rotate it so that it kind of lines up about where I wanted it to be. And then I'm going to extrude with extrude dot. I'm going to hold down shift and it's going to go in both directions. Then I'm going to use another rounded rectangle. And then I'm going to drag it out kind of like that. And let's move it. Kind of to there. And I'm going to scale it slightly. Readjust it. And then I can just trim. It gives me the work that I was looking for. I need to offset it. To give it some thickness, so I'm going to go up here to the solid menu. I'm going to say solid offset. I'm going to flip it so the arrows are going in the right direction. And then let's like do, I don't know, like a quarter inch. Thickness, and it looks like wouldn't mind changing this relationship a little bit, kind of like that. And then what we can do is hack this off and then design the, the transition the way that goes. And then I'm going to set this up so that it's actually centered on the wheel. So I'm going to move from identify the center of this thing. I need to identify the center of where this is. So I'm going to use a three-point curve or a three-point arc. And then I can pick, and there's my center point. So I'm going to drop a center point there using O snap. And then I can pick this whole thing. Move it. Center point. Okay, I know it's lined up. Right. We need to design some axles and things like that, but let's throw our, um, let's throw our, uh, and it looks like we need a little bit more space for our fender. So let's shift control, drag this entire thing, and let's just move it up just a little bit like that. Just this guy. Moving the whole thing. So let's go back a step. I'm going to extract the inside surfaces, delete the outside ones. Check this off, move it up. It's misbehaving. I was hoping I was going to be able to sub, uh, sub object transform it, but it's not behaving. So, and we'll just loft that back together, join it, and then we'll velcro planar faces, which merges that loft back in, and then we'll offset again. There we go. So now we've got room for our fender. We can hack that off later, and that's fine. So let's go ahead and do that. And I'm going to actually just steal the shape, the tire. So let's grab this surface. I'm going to copy paste, and I'm just going to scale it up. And then let's go to the front view. And let's just draw the shape of our fender. Oops. 
get gotta get the rest of it. And it looks like it's looks like it's not really behaving the way I was hoping it would behave. So let's not use that. Let's use is this curve. Keep this edge. And let's go to revolve. And I'm going to set this kind of right in the center of where I want it to be. And then we'll revolve a surface. And we're going to use the center of this that direction. And that way that fits nicely with the fork. The original curve here that we had before. This. Looks like our seam was right in the center there, which is fine. And if we want to, you know, round off these corners and stuff like that, we can do that later. And I like to do previews so I can see what it looks like. And it looks like the one inch fillet actually kind of does what I was hoping for. Let's do the same thing down here. That'll work. So let's go ahead and finish up our details here. So what I'm going to do is actually going to take this and I'm going to run the two NURBS command. And what that's going to do is that is going to change my sub D object into NURBS polysurface. This is exactly like any other polysurface that you've ever used. And so what we can do is things like this. We can just come in here and do a surface. Then I'm going to copy this surface. Get my trim in the front. And then we're going to grab all of this stuff. We're just going to trim it out. So I'm going to trim this. I'm going to trim this. And I'm going to trim this. End up with a pretty nice sharp result, closed poly surface that blends into a really beautiful, really beautiful organic, which we can then say, okay, well, let's go ahead and add our, let's go ahead and add our little headlight detail in here. So I'm going to project this through. I'm going to use this to split. So I've got this broken off into a separate piece that I can then assign a material to. Almost done. I said about an hour and 15. We're doing good. So I'm going to break this off by dragging with the seaplane waffle and then tapping Alt. And then I'm going to scale it a little bit. Give a little bit of additional detail to this display. Maybe it's just got this like little individual step. And I'm going to hold down control when I drag on the seaplane waffle to extrude.
use that face, turn that off. I can Boolean these two together. So that gives that little detail. And so now all we got to do is add our, add our hand grips, and we're pretty much there. We should add a little detail to add the bottom of this thing and all that kind of stuff. But I think you can kind of see the finish. We got to figure out kind of how the hand grips relate to the unit up here. Maybe they kind of are out in space like that, and maybe they neck down, or maybe there's some kind of blend in here. What we want to do is build a blend surface between these two. And Say OK, and then maybe what we want to do is change the degree of this so it's degree 3 in both directions, which will give us control points to mess with. And once we've got control points, the fun begins because we can make these do all sorts of stuff like that. Our thing is too big. Maybe we get something like that. That's kind of interesting. Let's join it all up. Cap it. I don't love that transition right there. So let's right click on the fillet tool, which is blend. And let's preview it. That's obviously too big. Eh, that's going to misbehave. So let's do this. Grab a square. Let's come out somewhere like that. And let's trim this. We're going to just make a hole. And then we'll use Blend Surface to put it back together. That's one of my favorite tricks, because it really um, allows you to kind of control the um, how that transition happens. And it ends up doing kind of a lovely job. So we'll join this up. Go to the top view and trim it. use a line from zero. Here it. And it looks like those handlebars are kind of comically long, so let's let's hack that off a little bit. And you can see that history updated the other side. And there's a couple of options that we can do for the caps down here. I kind of like spherical caps, so let's throw a let's just throw a sphere with a center radius on there. And then let's trim. I'm going to type CRV in the command line, and that's going to allow me to pick this surface edge as a trim input, and then I can just trim that back. If we want, we can Boolean this all together. And we should have, it says an open poly surface, so let's figure out where. Ah, our headlight. Now we're closed poly surface. So this whole thing, you know, we could throw through a printer, and then the last detail that we need to just sort out is this relationship down here, which I'm going to just do with a straight line. Cap. And let's build a little fork. Start 
out of here. Let's take a look at what this looks like here. And you know that tube has got a different shape, so let's do um, let's do a circle instead. I'm gonna just I'm gonna just stick a three point circle in here, and then I'm gonna scale it so that it fits, and then go to the front view, make sure that it's centered. Bring a NURBS object back because the subbies don't necessarily have centers. And then I'm going to change my gumball to be aligned to the object. And then I'm going to drag and I'm going to hold down shift. It's going to extrude in both directions. Poke this. Back up a little bit because it's too high. Boolean this together. We are almost out of here. And then I'm going to just throw a small fillet on there for a nicer transition. I usually like to keep my sub D parts. So I'm going to put this on a layer. When we converted to NURBS, I didn't use the delete option. And I made this separately. And so I usually like to keep those in case the client makes changes. So now if we go into rendered view, we can see that, oh, hour and 12 minutes. <laughs> I said an hour and 15, right? <laughs> We're an hour and 12, so we're we're right about where we needed to be. So, and then we could assign materials to this if we wanted to and, and you know, get a quick rendering. Let's just do some plastic. We'll do this in black for wheels. And I'm going to make the reflectivity. Actually, I'm going to make that kind of frosty. We'll add that to the tires. And we can... I think I'm going to leave the body. Let's do the body. Let's do it kind of like a, I don't know, feeling like kind of a chalky green kind of thing. It feels like a city scooter kind of color. And our foot pads, we'll do those in black. And then. Fender, let's do that in black. Wheels, we'll pull metal wheels on it. Gonna roughen that up a little bit and we'll make them a little darker. Now, is there a ton of refinement to still be done here? Sure, of course. In an hour and 15 minutes for something that you could then essentially throw through a printer and get a get a read as to whether or not you're on the right track, I think we're in good shape. Let's do plastic. And I'm going to do this kind of a grayish. Control shift click. Remember we had this headlight cut out. So if I control shift click, I can sub object select and sub object assign a material to it. And then our display up here, object select click, control shift click all of this stuff. Say that this is some kind of display. Now we could map a decal on here if you wanted it to actually look like a display or any of that kind of stuff. And object select this. And we are pretty much to the point where we could now start doing additional detailing. You know, we could we could put our cuts in for our steering tube and all that stuff. Because it's NURBS, you know, we can we can do this kind of stuff pretty easily now. So if I hide this image and if we run a ray trace on this. We can get an image that we can start throwing through. And if I render, I like to use the NVIDIA denoisers. I'm using an NVIDIA video card. 
and they the images come up really quick. So you can see in 13 seconds, all the noise is pretty much gone already. So any questions on that? If not, I, that's about as far as I'm going to go today. Um, I think that covers a lot of the things that I wanted to show today. Um, but it's it's uh, it's definitely um, at a point where we could start doing some evaluation and we could print some early parts and do some testing and see how it feels and then go back and start adjusting and, and you know through the rest of the design process. But you know, in an hour to get to this point, it's it's you know pretty pretty good spot to be in. So, any questions so far? If not, I think I'm going to let you go. Thank you for joining. I'm Kyle Houchins. This is Getting Started Rhino for Windows. Go make great stuff. Thanks. Bye. <laughs>